What's good y'all? Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do one of many Sashiko Boro techniques that I used on bags like these as well as countless other bags that I've made. This technique is really fun to experiment with and it's nice because you can do it on an existing piece of clothing or making something from scratch. You can do this method in so many different ways to get different results whether by messing around with different fabrics, stitch patterns, distressing methods and so on. But I'm going to start by showing you guys how to do this in a way that will be easy for a lot of you guys to start with to get a feel for it. A sashiko and distressing tutorial has been highly requested on my TikTok and Instagram, so I figured it was finally time to get to it. I'm going to do some more tutorials for other kinds of sashiko that I do over the next couple months, but I figured this would be the perfect one to start with, so let's get to it. All you're going to need is the base fabric of your choice, the top fabric of your choice, a dremel or something to distress with, sashiko thread and needles then a thimble can be helpful too you'll also need glue i generally recommend glue sticks but i use fabric glue occasionally too with the dremel i'm going to use a sanding bit but you can experiment with different types of bits for the base fabric i recommend using something heavier like denim or canvas and for the top fabric i'd recommend something light like a thin cotton but you could also use something like a jersey knit or french terry too you could do this straight onto an existing pair of clothes like some jeans or something like that but i'm using the denim to make a bag so i'm going to cut pieces of both fabrics that are a bit bigger than my pattern pieces then i'm going to spread some glue on the back side of the top fabric and i'll stick it onto the base fabric i like to use a roller or some books to make sure it's all stuck down i'll start distressing the top fabric now you'll want to just gently glide the dremel on the top of the fabric so it just shaves the top layer make sure you're not pushing down and putting holes in the bottom layer too it's completely up to you how much you distress sometimes i do a lot of distressing sometimes Sometimes it's very minimal. This time I'd say I'm going for something in between. I do recommend distressing a little less than you think you may want to at first because you can always distress more, but obviously you can't undo the distressing. I also like to use a razor to go back and scrape the dust off caused by the distressing. Then I give it a good lint roll too. Once you've distressed it to your liking, you can move on to the hand stitching. I think it's helpful to draw lines for each row of stitching to make sure everything is even. It's up to you how you space things, but for this piece, I'm going to do the rows 3 8 of an inch apart. I'm also extra, so I mark out where each stitch will hit, but you definitely don't have to do this. I'm ready to stitch now, so I'll get a long piece of thread on my needle and knot the end of it. Then I'll start on the underside of the fabric to hide the knot, and I'll come up, go back down, back up, back down, and so on. I'll compress the fabric as I do each stitch so I can make it as far as possible down the line because it's a lot faster this way than doing one stitch at a time. Once I make it as far as I can, I'll pull the thread through making sure the thread is tight. Once you get to the end of the first row, you'll want to make sure the thread ends on the underside. Then you'll just come back up at the start of the second row. You'll keep going, stitching row by row. As you go, make sure your thread is pulled completely tight where there's no loose areas in it, but you also don't want to pull it so tight that it's scrunching the fabric. Once you've run out a thread you'll go ahead and tie a knot on the underside then you'll get some more thread on the needle and get back at it the point of doing this boro stitch is to lock this top piece of fabric down onto the base fabric so as you go i recommend watching for areas you can hit on your line to make certain spots more secure whether it's a lone area of distressing or on the edge where a little bit of the distressing is sticking up regardless you'll just keep going row by row it's by no means difficult but it is a bit tedious but just keep going until you've covered your whole area you want to secure then go ahead and finish it off with a knot on the bottom. Once it's all done, I like to iron it out quick. And now that it's all stitched, you can go back and add more distressing if you want. I recommend stitching it before you do too much distressing. This way you've at least solidified areas where the thread will go through both layers of fabric for sure. So you can add more distressing between the stitches while still being able to be confident in the fact that your stitching will hold down the top fabric in the areas you need it to. Once you have it completely distressed, you can wash the fabric by hand and let it air dry. Then I like to go back and add more stitching if needed. I look for any areas where the edges of the distressing don't look 100% secure or areas of lone distressing that just don't have enough stitching in general. This is also a chance to add some stitch detailing too, whether it be a cross stitch or an X stitch like this or adding in some stars or other random shapes. You could use this to make things more secure while also adding in more details at the same time. Another thing I like to do to secure specific areas where I maybe don't want to add more 
more detailing or a super visible stitch in general is use a lightweight thread that matches the fabric and I just come up through the bottom and back down as close to where I came up as possible. This way I can secure a certain area without taking away from the other stitching. I showed this on fabric that I used to make a bag, but you can also do this same method on existing pieces. So say I wanted to do it on some jeans I already own, I could just cut out some of the top fabric, glue it onto the leg or as many different areas as you want and distress it, hand stitch it, same as I did in this video. You can also use this same technique in other ways, whether it be to secure some distressed denim or for something like this bag where the stitching does help add durability to the scrap sheet that I made, but it's more for the detailing in this case. There's so many different twists that you can put on this method by combining different colors and patterns of the top fabric or by using different distressing methods and different fabrics to get different textures on the top. So just have fun with it and get creative. My favorite part about this technique is that the point of it is to experiment and try new things. Of course, you do want to make sure that you're securing the two layers together and that everything is still very durable. But at the end of the day, it's a very fluid and experimental form. So you can just do whatever you want with it and experiment and try new things. I hope this tutorial is easy to follow. I'm still learning as I go. So feel free to drop any questions you guys have down in the comments and I'll do my best to help. If you want to see some more of my work, I'm also on Instagram and TikTok. TikTok, and if you want more tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe here. I'm going to do some more Sashiko tutorials soon. There's a bunch of other styles that I've used on various things. So let me know what you guys want to see next. But for now, have fun with this technique. Get creative with it. I can't wait to see what you guys make. I love y'all.